We take a look here, Jimmy, at the main event, Kamaru Usman, Colby Covington. And if you go back far enough in the historical shows that we have done, it's interesting that you talked about dreading this fight. And you dreaded this fight because of the undertones that it would have, from race to politics. And it's interesting to me that, at least from what we've seen thus far, very little of that has started to actually come into play. And I say that because, obviously Penny agrees, but I say that because... Penny totally agrees with you. You have two great wrestlers here, right? You have Kobe, great wrestler, relies on pressure. I'm just not sure he's used to a guy that can feed that back to him or a guy that that's not going to work on. You have a guy like Kobe that relies on volume, death by a thousand cuts, if you will. You have a guy like Kamar that hits harder, doesn't necessarily finish, but has, I think, more power. And it makes this a really tough fight to call. Almost a coin flip. And I know a lot of people don't want to hear that. I know a lot of people want to hear Kamaru is going to win because Kamaru is going to win, right? Kamaru is the better person, we think. Kamaru is not the character. Kamaru doesn't come in with all the baggage. We want him to win. But I actually look at the emotional side of this, the mental side of this. We've heard so much from Kobe this week where I don't want to say that he's backtracked on things. But we're slowly learning that. I guess what a lot of us knew all along, this is just a character. This was a means to an end. This was a guy that was taking a shtick and utilizing it. And you know what? To his point, Colby wasn't getting these fights. He wasn't getting this push. He wasn't getting this notoriety before he started doing all this. And it set a really bad example that the squeaky wheel kind of gets the grease. And unfortunately, in this situation, that squeaky wheel is squeaked with a lot of things we don't want to hear about. We don't care about. But I think if you look at it that way, Kobe has to be in a much less clear mental place because he's going through all these emotions. He's coming out and telling us, hey, listen, th this is kind of a character. This is what I had to do. Kamara doesn't have any of that. Kamara's just a great fighter. I'm not saying Kobe isn't, but these guys are in two different places mentally. And when you have such an even fight, I can't help but think, that that mental edge that Kamaru is going to have is going to be all the reason that he is going to win this fight. Because he's at least going into the cage with someone that's vulnerable to breaking. Somebody that we don't know every bit about. And I think that will truly be the difference. I think we're going to see a full five-round fight. But I think for the first time in a long time, we're going to see Colby start to wear down. And Kamaru's pressure be too much. And the end, hopefully... We see a handshake, a hug, and we don't have to witness this character that Kobe has created anymore. I hope so, but here's the deal. We talked about this before, and I have said, Kobe Covington has bet all the chips that he can win. Because the heel gimmick as far as he has pushed it, and he has pushed it far, gets real tired when you start losing. He's really betting the house on the fact that he can become champion and defeat Kamaru Usman. The interviews he's given recently make me think he's hedging his bets. Hey, I'm not such a bad guy. If I lose, keep me around. I'm, I'm not that bad of a guy. He's trying to win back, it seems like, some fans. And all by itself, that's fine. But heading into this fight, it could be an indication that he's not 100% confident. If he thought he could blow Kamaru Usman out of the water, I don't think he'd be saying the things he's saying. I think he'd, he'd, he'd double down on this, you know, shtick he's got going. But I think the fact that he is kind of trying to take some chips off the table indicates a little bit of – it indicates a little bit that things are getting to him. Now, I read a recent article about the isolation he's facing in American Top Team training by himself and all these things because of the, you know, the divisive things he has said that have split the team, his rivalry with Masvidal, things like that. So I think mentally he might not be in the best of places. That's what I think about the head the head games. Physically and tactically, this is a guy you saw in the Robbie Lawler fight who kind of dove for the legs 
and relied on his ability to take an opponent down and wear them down and not have to necessarily set up his strikes. I'm sorry, his takedowns. Kamar Usman's a decorated wrestler in his own right. I don't think he can do that. I think we'll see more of an upper body approach, kind of like he used against Rafael Dos Anjos. But Kamar Usman's a strong guy. He's a big 170 pounder, which, you know, RDA to his, despite all of his clear talent and gifts, is not a natural 170 pounder. That has cost him, certainly cost him against Colby Covington. Penny agrees with me. So anyway, I think those two things are kind of working against him. The the problem is the difference between these two fighters is like a razor's edge. They're so close. Endless gas tank, check. Not great finishers, check. Standout wrestlers, check. More volume than power, check. Now, the difference is Kamar Usman has better medium range power than Colby Covington. Not a knockout guy, can't necessarily hit with one shot and finish you, but has better medium range power. Colby Covington has volume for days. So they're both volume strikers, but Colby has more volume. Kamar Usman has more power. The problem with winning rounds like that is I think Kamar Usman might land big shots just enough to sway the judges. You tend to remember the one big shot more than the four or five pitter pat shots that don't really hurt you. And although Colby Covington does have kickboxing skills, it's it's the death of a thousand cuts. It's all about volume. I think this fight is going to be extremely close. I barely have the edge for Kamara Usman because of the mental and tactical things I just talked about. Well, if nothing else, I can sit here 100% conviction and tell you I am glad that we are having that conversation about this fight. Because if you told me a couple months ago that that's what we were going to focus on, I would have probably disagreed with you. And I'm hoping that you know, as we record this three days out from the event – that we continue to have that narrative hold true, and this doesn't turn into anything other than an athletic competition, because I feared that it would, and I'm glad that it hasn't, because certainly this is going to be a massive card. We appreciate you guys taking a little bit of time of your day to listen to our breakdowns, and we will be back very shortly with more commentary. 